Hey guys, welcome to the Hardcore Strong Podcast. This is episode nine. Uh, I am your host. I am Ernest. And I am Cassandra. And we have some awesome, many special guests with us for once. We have a room full of yeah, we got, we got a, we're, we're packed house today, guys. Uh, first and foremost, thank you guys for coming in today, risking your lives with the coronavirus and everything going on. So uh, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day and kind of just spending your Saturday with us. So just introduce yourselves real quick. Um, I'm Diego. Sam. Uh, Mike, everybody calls me Silent Mike. I'm pretty quiet, so you might not hear a whole lot of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny because uh, I think the first time I even heard you talk was on the Ed's podcast, so it was so funny that I was like, damn, I didn't even know what his voice sounded like, so it was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> the only time you really hear me is like if I'm yelling up on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's funny. So, yeah, thank you guys for taking the time out and kind of spending the Saturday, like I said. Um, real quick, Sam, can you kind of just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're passionate about? Um. Grew up in Westwood, um, passionate about comedy. I like seeing people. I like making people happy. I like seeing them laugh. Um, that gives me the energy that helps with uh, depression and anxiety and all that shit. So it's good to see people happy. It makes me feel good. So that's why I like doing comedy. And like, and I figure if I'm good at it, might as well at least try to get paid for it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how long have you been doing co- uh, comedy for? Uh, for about 10 years now. So... Uh, well, coming up, so a month after our dad passed, um, I met my manager, Ed Giovanni, and it's just been going since. Right on. Um, can you kind of take us back to your childhood and what it was like uh, growing up with your brother and kind of how you guys met Mike? Yeah. Um, so the childhood, uh, like you said previously, I grew up in Westwood, um, a little rough area, typical hood, you know. <laughs> Violence and gangs and what, what street? What street was it? It was Quitman in Kentucky. Oh, okay. Right across. Well, we we're in between, so it was right across from the Boys and Girls Club. Owens, right? Yeah, you know, right next to that park. We lived in that little brick red house, and then on Quitman in Kentucky, we lived right on the. It was technically Ohio and Kentucky, so right in that corner house, it has a big old tree. So when you drive by there, um, I actually planted that tree when I was younger. Oh, really? Yeah. And you guys were living together at the time, Diego. Um, well, we had the same dad, different mom, so summertime he was with us, and then the rest of the year he was with his mom, or... So Diego was adopted. Pretty Pretty much. (laughs) 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 Yeah. But most of the time, I was always traveling around with my mom, though. Like, we were back and forth from here in Nebraska, so I wasn't there most of the time. But summer, yeah, I was there. Okay. So, yeah, go go ahead, continue. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it was, it was rough back in the day, because, like I said, it was just, uh... Um, we were always living with either dad or being watched by grandma. You know, mom left when she was younger, so right. that's out the picture. Same, same here. Yeah, I really, I mean, that's all I got really to say. You know, I really ain't got nothing nice to say, so I just leave it at that. All right. You know, just be respectful about the situation because mm-hmm. I try not to sound like an M&M or a fat M&M. <laughs> 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 and not the candy. Though, right. Right. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not the candy. Right? He's m M&M with peanuts. <laughs> yeah, I'm just about to say that. A whole lot of peanuts or what? <laughs> yeah. The big yellow one. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, so it was, uh, it, like I, I tell everybody, I'm like, it's just like a typical hood, hood story. <laughs> you know, you just try to overcome it. You know, the dad moved us out, moved us into a white area, and it was weird because it was so quiet up there. And coming, you know, coming back down in the hood now, and especially working with the city, you know, back in the area, you're like, fuck, I can't get out of this damn area. <laughs> right. But um, it's definitely changed a lot. But, like, you know, the older you get, the more you understand it. So, I mean, the childhood wasn't bad. It was just, like I said, average, typical story. Um, just, you know, parents always working or you know one gone um, right but nothing really changed till when he passed but up until then you know i was always just a class clown i wanted to make people laugh and just do stupid stuff right mm-hmm. and you at that time you were bouncing from school to school both of you pretty much man that's i couldn't even count how many times i moved i went to stein god's men like we we're just all over the place coons miller and then more middle school and then finally we finished at Pomona we actually stayed at Pomona for more than two years and graduated but yeah it was just house to house city to city but we we majority grew up in Westwood for a long time and then that's when we started bouncing around okay so um in your teenage years were you just were you doing any comedy at that point or were you just kind of doing some hood rat shit with your friends (laughs) (laughs) just uh just doing some hood rat shit so um 
like I tell people now, because before, you know, it was, it was hard for our generation to talk about feelings because, you know, when we grew up, it's like, be a man, don't right, be a right, bitch, be right, a man. Right, right, right. You need to be tough. You need to be strong. Don't show no emotions. So, like, now, you know, that shit's starting to come back, and it's like a pain in the ass because, like, I'm I'm trying to let those emotions come out, you know, and not seem like a bitch at the same time because that's what it, we, we were taught growing up. Right. Um. So when we were doing, um, when we were doing that, it just was... Uh, it was hard, man, because like uh, when I was younger, I wasn't really into comedy. Right. I just, I, I just, I liked mm-hmm. entertaining people. I liked making people laugh. I was always a class clown, but deep down inside, you know, I was, like I said earlier, you know, with the depression and anxiety, mm-hmm. I was still sad because yeah, I didn't have that mother figure there, or you know, it was basically the love I've had love from other people, but it wasn't the love that I wanted. Right. So that's why I like making people laugh. But I wasn't doing any stand up my teenage years. Just hood rat shit, just trying to make money. <laughs> right. Doing radios or, you know, just <laughs> right. slanging little sacks here and there. Like, just whatever I could. Um, just like a ghetto Robin Hood. I never stole from my own kind. <laughs> right. So throughout your teenage years, is that when you uh, ended up meeting Mike? Right. Is, so you work for uh, Sam's father, right? Yeah, I work for his dad. Um, this was 2007, 2008 when I first started with the city. Yeah, I'm, I'm the old guy of the group. <laughs> <laughs> but I still look better than all of them, so. That's, 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 good. that's true. Yeah, so, yeah uh, you don't got no city miles like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I met him through his dad. Um, uh, his dad used to throw some crazy um, Christmas parties when we were all together. And I met Sam because Sam, he, his dad used to make, uh, you know, he used to get twisted pretty good. And his dad used to make Sam drive us home, all, the, all his employees home, so that's how I met Sam. <laughs> So, and then uh, when Sam uh, finally came to the city full time, it's kind of, we just kind of hit it off. Had a lot in common, you know, grew up in the same neighborhood, same old shit. So, and that's my boy right there. So. Right, right on. That's awesome. I never got a chance to meet your dad, man. Yeah, I heard I heard good things, though, bro. Yeah, I met Bird a little bit later on, you know, before he even started with the city and stuff. Yeah, it's, we- it's weird, man. Like, um, and that's the thing, too, is like, um, this is the second time, like, we've talked about him, but, like, we never really talked about it. Like, we just sat here, you know, like, hey, uh, we miss him or here mm-hmm. and there. But, like, same, like, with the feelings, too. It's It's been kind of cool because, like, it's been coming out slowly. Mm-hmm. And it, and it and it's weird, man, because, like, when we express ourselves how we feel about it, like, everybody, like, it's cool about it. You know, like I said, people will be like, oh, you know, don't be a bitch about it. Or right. a man should be this way. It's like, nah, I really don't feel that way, you know. It's like I'm tired of that tough guy persona, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like... And it's, so it's it's a hard transition now. So we're trying to, we're just trying to get you know express ourselves. So talking about him, um, from what I hear from everybody is basically I'm just like him. <laughs> yeah, I look just like him, and they say I act just like him. So I mean, people were like, I wish I could have met him, and my you know our grandma would be like, well he 2.0 is right here. You know? <laughs> right. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, can you just touch on where, where you got uh, the nickname Bird from, real quick? The name? Yeah, the nickname. Oh, okay. So I guess, because <clears throat> apparently when I was born, my dad seen me and he picked me up and he was just looking at me laughing and I was like, "What?" And he's like, "At least like a fat dodo bird." And I'm like, oh, my <laughs> <laughs> so ever since, ever since then, everyone's just been calling me Bird. And then anytime, like, like they all know me as Bird, the family knows me as Bird. So anytime someone else calls me by my name, I'm like, sometimes I won't even like like function or hear it. I just be like ignoring them, doing my thing, and they're like, "Yeah, go." Still not, and he's like, oh, he, he don't really know that name. <laughs> yeah, that's weird when we hear Diego. I'm like, damn, like, the only people that call him there are the IRS and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and the police. Like, yeah. Oh, shit. By his government name? Yeah, that's when I got to act right. He's like, what? What? Yeah, yep, exactly. <laughs> that's so funny. Um, I'm, I'm constantly always showing people your guys' um, – your funny fucking – you know, pretty much your life through Snapchat all the time. I mean, I've I've showed her oh countless God. times on your Snapchats, your Snapchats, and how how yeah, funny you guys crazy. are. How many different times have people have or has this happened? Have you had people that you do not know come up to you like, oh, I know you guys from so and so Snapchat or anything like that? Um, I say me the most because I get it all the time. Like, hey, I know you. I'm like, is it from my brother Snap? And like, I think so. Is his name Sam? But I'm like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you're famous, dog. I'm like, I don't even know. Uh, that. Well, Sam made a fucking meme page about you, and he's fucking he has your your face on buttons and shirts and 
everything you can think of. So. Yo, someone thought uh, that he got a pillowcase. I was like, no, nah, that's just a shirt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I> just, <laughs> oh, he, he fuck. Just, yeah, no, I was doing uh, I was doing laundry and I put the shirt over the pillow and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I could fucking see Diego pillows, Diego yeah. mugs. Yeah. Oh I was I like, you know, I just keep buying him Air Force Ones and Hennessy, and he won't get the rest of the money. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, so where do, where do you get a lot of your ideas just to do these fucking funny, hilarious Snapchats? I mean, you have me rolling on the daily, bro. Yeah, you're super Hon- creative. Honestly, <laughs> um, sure. I'm just always thinking, and these guys know I stress myself out a lot, man, because, like, I try not to do s- the same stuff, or I'll see something that inspires me, and I try not to, like, Mark Zuckerberg it or, like, <laughs> right. Carlos Mencia it. Um, I'm just always thinking. I'm, they'll be sitting there, and I'll just be staring off his face, and I'm just like always thinking, or I'll write something down. Like I'm, I'm just constantly thinking about it, because I don't want to put something that's already been done, or if it's been done, how do I, you know, do better than that? Um, so it's just constant thinking. Like I'm always just on the go. I'm always ready to, if somebody talks to me and they want, you know, a skit idea, I just I'm giving them, you know, one, two, three, four, five skits a day, or you know, something like that. Like I help a lot of TikTokers out too. Right. Um, OG Taco, you know, I give him advice, me and him go back and forth, and then it just goes from there. That's tight, man. Um, so, yeah, it's just constantly thinking, man, and just I stress myself out a lot doing that because, like, I don't want to be the same. Right. Yeah, we were talking about that the other day. Is that uh, that he I was like, man, he should be all over TikTok. He should be all over mm-hmm. YouTube. And I even messaged you. I was like, man, you need to make a YouTube channel start, you know, blowing up on there. Yeah, because I, I was slowly transitioning. So I started the YouTube, and then I was going to – we're writing down all these ideas and like we're gonna do these videos and all that and then that's when that deal came in from netflix and all that stuff so like everything kind of got set on the back burner because right. that was the main priority right but um and then the tiktok tiktok was doing good so i put up a video of somebody fighting and it got flagged <laughs> and i got shadow banned <laughs> oh, oh fuck so i had to make a new profile and then i just haven't been doing it since because I've, right. I've been so busy with the show Right, which we're going to touch on here in a little bit, too, which is congratulations, by the way. That's awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. Nigga, we made it. <laughs> <laughs> that's tight, man. Um, yeah, so to do that, that's really, really cool. Do you guys have TikTok, by the way? Yeah. yeah. The creep. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I forgot. This this dude right here is fucking TikTok famous. Uh, his TikTok hey, famous as fuck. No, no, no. Yeah, his car, car is. His car is. Oh, is. Yeah. yeah, he has like a he put, shit he ton. He puts one video up his face and I'm all those followers. <laughs> <laughs> I got like that's five so funny. views and like two likes on my video and the car has like that's thousands. So funny. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, uh, we're still trying to uh, figure out the algorithm on TikTok. We're, uh, we post a few things, but it's yeah. nothing like your shit. It do, it's all a right. hit or miss. I'll put up a, I'll think I'll put up a fire video. I'm like, <laughs> oh, you know, I'm like, this worked on Snapchat, Instagram right. liked it. I'm like, I'm going to go put it on TikTok, and then it'll get, like, negative views. I'm like, how the hell did this happen? <laughs> That's so and then funny. I'll see somebody drinking water, and then they knock over the bottle, and then it has, like, 100... Uh-huh. K likes right. and a bunch of shares. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> For real. Bro. I know, that's yeah, funny. It is crazy. We have like one of our videos that we did together has like a ton of views. Well, like 20,000 now, but we just aren't consistent. So I'm like, we need to like try to be because it's hard. Like, it's and, it was, and it was a f- most preparation we did. But yeah, it was like yeah. an actual thought yeah, out see, process. Yeah. And that's, like, that's the hard thing too. You had to the reenact consistency. it. Yeah. Right. Because like I see people like putting videos out daily or like on the hour and I'm like, shit, man, like how do you do that? And that's why I said yeah. like with the creativity and all that, it's like I'm constantly thinking, but it's hard to put all that out and right try to be consistent at the same right. time i know they said like the easiest way because even on instagram is to just do a day of recording and save them and then you just put them out every day you know like save them in your drafts so you have them so you have like one day of filming and you don't have to do it every week you know every day all week even with instagram pictures i know girls do that right. they'll do like a month of shots in one day and then they just have them ready to post well wow. that's how we are well i mean not us but Usually, like, with our videos, we don't even, like, actually plan them, like, how you guys said we did. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, right. We actually do our shit, like, freestyle. If we do it blind, it just doesn't work right. So, mm-hmm. if we freestyle it, it's, like, the most views and... Yeah, like, all oh, that like, shit was so when we did When we did Saw in the Hood, we, we sat down for, like... <laughs> 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 I showed you yeah, that, I remember? Yeah. That, that was freestyle. <laughs> yeah, that we literally sat down for, like, ten minutes, talked it over, went over everything, and then we did it as we went and That's put so it up, cool. and we're like, holy shit. And then, like, when we actually, planned, the- well, I we knew actually it- planned Saw in the Hood 2 out... And we did it, and I just, I never liked it, so I never released it. Right. And I was like, fuck this. I was like, this shit was just, mm-hmm. I'm not feeling it. Well, I just knew it was going to be funny because I was just chilling in my room, and he just comes in and just stares at me. I'm like, what do you want? <laughs> He's like, come help me do something real quick. I'm like, what is it? He's like, just trust me. Just come do it. And I'm like, he's, he's got a video plan. See, and, and, and this guy is more mainly in my videos and Snapchats because 
Mike lives in his own house. Right. So, like, when me and this dude were living together, I'm always making him my test dummy. I'm like, yo, come here, come check this out. Or, hey, record this video for me. So, like, I was always putting his pictures up. Mm-hmm. Um, I was always putting him in my videos because, like I said, not only dealing with that anxiety and shit like that, like, you know, being the big funny dude, I was still self-conscious about my image. So, like, right. I wouldn't put myself in videos at all. It's like, nah, I don't, I don't want to be seen on camera, you know. Or mm-hmm. I'd make jokes, but, like, deep down inside, that shit would sting me. So, I'm like, so I was like, well, at least I could lose weight. We'll just put this ugly dude on video. <laughs> well, he would get me by the fucking either don't be a bitch or be like, you won't. I'm like, bet. <laughs> he already knows how to get you. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, he knows, we, he knows we, exactly what to say to yeah, you. Yeah, we all know how to get each other, so we'll I all do bet. that. You know, or like Mike, we'll <laughs> go like shopping with Mike. Other. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, that's the last one, Mike. And he's like, oh, I can't. I'm like, it's the last one you'll ever see. <laughs> <laughs> They're never going to have it again. And he's like, oh, <laughs> man. And he's like, all right. And then he scratch his head. All right, I'll grab it. Oh, and they'll see, try to do it to me, and I'm just like, nah. Uh, this past few weeks, I've been getting him back to it. It's like, oh, you need this, Sam. He's like, yeah, I need it. <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, you should get that. I'm like, but these two like to tag team and try to get me to do it the most. <laughs> yeah, getting this dude to buy something, dude. I'm, I can pull teeth better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that fucking high car payment he got. Oh, yeah, it's the car. Hey, Fuck. Bro. Exactly. Pull teeth when he pays his bills, but when it comes to dollar man, he's like. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, like on paydays, we'll be like, you know, usually on paydays, somebody goes somewhere out and you eat the Red Lobster or, you know, not not like a super fancy restaurant, right. but above the normal. I'll be like, what do you want to eat? And he'll be like, well, you know, the usual. And it's like, that dollar man, anything dollar man, <laughs> you know, Wendy's, Taco Bell, like, some four for four. He's all like, on me. It's like, I got you. I got you this time. Yeah. Yeah. Tell him, let's go get some fuzz. It's like, nah, how about that dollar <laughs> menu, though? <laughs> that and a bottle of Henny or what? Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. yeah, see, that's different. That's yeah. a different category. Yeah, that, that's mandatory. Yeah, right. the, the Hennessy Air Force Ones, anything for his car, that's full price. Yeah. <laughs> then when you be posting his Air Force Ones on there, bro, that shit, <laughs> fucking dying. <laughs> oh, stepping on his shit. We had to, man. He, he had those. Like I said, he had those ones from '89. <laughs> fresh off the box, they ain't never left his feet. Oh nah. fuck! Oh, that's so funny. So, is yeah. that what the income tax money went to the fucking Henny and new shoes or what? No, nah, I actually just actually used my money, and bought some new ones. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's remember, and I put it on my Snapchat, and it snowed for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> he spent some money finally. Yeah, I was yep. like, he, he spent his own money, no hesitation, and it snowed every day. Yep, that's funny. Ridiculous. Uh, so kind of going back uh, to the the comedy. Um, w- do you remember the first time that you um, got on stage, and what was that like for you? Yeah, um, actually at Gennaro's on South Broadway. Sweet. It's a little Italian restaurant, and nice. it has a corner pocket to where you can do stand up in. Uh, it was in 2010, and it was in it was May 10th because it was a month after my dad's uh, death. Um, I was so damn nervous. I'm used to being in the spotlight, but like I said, I grew up as the popular kid, so in high school everybody knew me. Um, being in front of the school staff, like we had to do skits to run for homecoming king or prom king. Right, right, right. right. So that kind of helped me out, and then playing football, you know, being in the spotlight. But when I got on that stage, and there was like. All my family was there. The room was packed. Everybody was there. I was super nervous. Mm-hmm. I was sitting up there shaking. I, I couldn't speak. You know, you, I it sounded choking up. And, like, I just, I looked like Michael J. Fox with the microphone. <laughs> I was just going 90, that oh shit in my God. hand. Get <laughs> sick, fuck. I, I felt like Get sick, motherfucker. I felt like a little kid. <laughs> my voice was cracking like I was going through puberty and oh shit. Right. I'm getting up there, and, you know, I'm like, what the deal with airline food? <laughs> sounding like Jerry Springer and shit. Oh, shit. But, um, That's funny. Nah, man, it was cool. It was just it was nerve wracking, that, and that's why I was telling Diego because I've been trying to get Diego. I'm like, hey, that's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I heard, like, man. I'm like, you're funny, dude. Just transition. I'm like, we can all get there, and we could take over. You know, we could be the squad and just take over comedy mm-hmm. shows. And I'm like, I want you guys to be as successful or more successful than me. So I've been telling him the ins and outs. But yeah, man, I was super nervous. But mostly it was that state. It was that stage fright. What right. it was. And seeing you guys as as a crew, I think it's really cool, and I think you guys have a really good thing going. Um, and I totally can see you guys going to like do a comedy, fucking you know, you know, doing a a whole show with you guys because you guys are fucking hilarious. You guys make me laugh on the daily, and I'm always looking forward to your Snapchats, dude. So it's funny. Um, so who are some of your comic like other comedians that are like your uh, your influence? Um, a lot of the older guys, Red Fox, Richard Pryor. Um, I, I watch a lot of them. Eddie Murphy, like they're just. Bernie Mac, just, you know, the the raw, ruthless motherfuckers. George Carlton, um, like, 
Bob Saget. A lot of people see Bob mm-hmm. Saget and they think of Full House, but like right. Bob Saget on stage is a whole totally yeah. different person now. I don't think I've ever seen him. No, oh, I yeah. honestly never. No, if no, you guys no. get a chance, check him out, and you're to be surprised because <laughs> I was too when I first seen him. Because people were like, "Check out Bob Saget." Like, I don't want to watch that shit. I want to watch some <laughs> fucking. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, he comes in and just rips it, and That's you're like, crazy. "Holy shit!" You're like, "Who's this dude?" And I've always liked that. So, um, but yeah, I like a lot of the older comedy guys because I was an older generation, and, you know, and right. they didn't they didn't give a fuck. So like, and it's hard nowadays to do that because people are so PC. Right. Yeah, sensitive. And so that's why now it's like with us, you know, we take into consideration like that, but we're like, you're here for a comedy show. So right. oh. get the fuck out or chill and get offended. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a really soft world nowadays, man. You can't say shit. So yeah, you can't do much, man. Um, but yeah, so the older guys, a um, little bit newer. I mean, I like Kevin Hart and Fluffy. Everybody compares me to Fluffy. <laughs> They're like, oh, you're the next Fluffy. I'm like, no, nah, I'm Sam Bueno. Like, who's that? I'm like, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That would, the, the, real quick, um, I think you guys talk about this on uh, the Ed's podcast is the Bueno, the last name. They, they don't think that's your real name. Is that, is that what you were saying? Yeah, man. Uh, a lot of people and, or anything, dude. Like, when I go to try to buy a gun or, you know, anything that involves my name. They're like Sam Bueno, and look at the idea. I'm like, it's it's real, dude. Like, <laughs> the, the last time we went to the gun store, this, the guy was actually showing up his ID, showing everybody, hey, look at his name, look at his name. Like, that's weird. Just run it and give me the gun, right? Yeah, right. like the dude didn't. He was like, that's so fucking cool. I'm like, just give me my fucking that's gun, <laughs> right? And your last name, Diego. So you, you guys don't share the last name, or what? How, what's that like? It was, but then my mom had switched it to her last name, which is Baruman. Right. So, um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> So a lot of people really don't know that we're actually brothers, but until he actually says something, then they actually realize and see mm-hmm. it. And then he tells them, you know, we got same dad, different moms. Like, oh. Yeah, because, like, people are, like, talking about it, and I'm like, yeah, fuck that dude. And they're like, damn, you're really beefing <laughs> with that dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, nah, that's just my brother. That's so funny. <laughs> like, new guys at the shop will come in. I'm like, yeah, don't right. trust that motherfucker. That's so funny. <laughs> and I, for a lot of our listeners, um, I think a lot of our followers and listeners don't even know that we all work together. So, yeah, we all work for the city and county of Denver. I rarely – I think I see you drive the tractor trailers, and literally this is the first time I've even talked to you. So. Yeah, if I, uh, I apologize if I run you off the road. No, nah, it's okay. <laughs> I'm usually there. <laughs> <laughs> all, you, all you see is just his head above his the head. window. <laughs> he's, uh, he's the only driver that has a, a booster seat in his truck is what I heard. Yeah, <laughs> tax dollars went to that. <laughs> <laughs> And that's so funny, yeah. Uh, it was funny because I remember the first time that me and Diego threw trash behind a, um, I don't remember who the fuck our driver was, but I remember we it was were. Darryl. Was it Daryl? Yeah. Was it Big Rick? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. funny. Shout out to Big Rick. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny. Um, yeah, it was crazy. I remember that like it was yesterday. Me and you were throwing fucking trash on the back of the truck, sleeping sleeping on in the three man trucks. Yeah. <laughs> Legs all on my chest and shit. Oh, like, get yeah. off of me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know you, bro. Yeah, there's, there's, so those are some good times, man. Yeah, it was the roughneck days. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to touch back on you mentioned the depression and anxiety and how comedy helped you or helps you kind of overcome that and you've been doing that since you were young when you were younger did you realize that was like intentional I know a lot of comedians suffer from depression I know that's a big thing and mm-hmm. I know a lot of us that know comedians or that world are aware of the fact of the overdosing and the addictions and stuff like that where you would think, well, you know, why do they feel that way? They're always happy, but obviously a lot of times it's a way for them to mask, you know, the pain or the yeah. depression. Um, but as when you were young, like, or at what point did you realize that's kind of what you were doing as opposed to just being the funny guy? Yeah, um, I've always had anxiety since I was young. I mean, I think I was like three years old. And I seen an article saying an asteroid was going to pass Earth, and I was so scared about oh dying. I was obsessed with it, and I was like, oh. And then, like, ever since then, like, my anxiety was through the roof. Wow. Um, my depression didn't kick in until after our dad had passed, but I try not to use that as a crutch. So it's mm-hmm. kind of frustrating sometimes because, you know, I have – it affected our whole family, and then I'll have family members that use it as a crutch, and I get mad, and, I, and mm-hmm. I, not everybody's the same. So I hope I can help influence somebody, but like I try to use it as a as a power resource instead of as a crutch or right. you know like the, oh poor me. It's like no, I'm trying to cope with it. Mm-hmm. Um, comedy helps me out with my depression because I said I like seeing people happy. It helps me out. I'll be the first to tell you I do hide behind a mask. I do act like everything's gravy mm-hmm. when shit's going chaotic, or I will have a the fake smile and then you know I'm like fuck, I'm sad as fuck. But. Um, 
just bringing joy to people. It just, it just makes me, it makes me feel better. Um, you know, I just try to be as real as possible, you know, with it because that shit sucks. Um, I've having my good days and I've had my bad days. Right. You know, growing up with the anxiety, um, it wasn't as bad because you know I was younger, didn't care, mm-hmm. I didn't have to be all, worry about being an adult. Um, actually, none of that shit kicked in until I've had to pay my first bill. <laughs> You know, growing up, right. I'm like, shit, this shit sucks, man. Not I'm like, adult. no wonder why fucking my dad was always so angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, shit, you got 20 kids running around and <laughs> <laughs> fucking bills to pay oh, and yeah. shit. Oh, fuck. I know we always talk about that, too. We're like, we stress out. I'm like, I can't imagine, like, having kids. Like, yeah. what, how would I afford it? I, don't I know give, what yeah, to give, yeah, I give, I give a lot <laughs> of people credit for that. Because, like, yeah. we don't have kids or, you know, Mike, Mike does. Mm-hmm. But, um. I just tell people, like, I'm not, right now, no, not financially, especially trying right. to achieve comedy. I'm like, mm-hmm. because, you know, if right. I have a kid, that's going to be my priority. I was like, right. so I will give everything up for that. So it's like, right now, I want to be selfish. But I do give credit right. for people doing it because that shit is hard. And, you know, and there's single moms out there, too, you know, that, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Dear mama. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> our, our grandma, either, it was either his mom helped or our grandma, you know, so it's mm-hmm. like. So we pay big respect to that shit to single moms. Right. I mean, and dads too, because like we do have dads that are like that. But mm-hmm. back to the depression and anxiety, um, it, it help it helps out tremendously instead of just holding it in and just pretending. Like for the past couple months now, since I've been on the diet and working out, mm-hmm. I've been expressing myself a lot more to like to these guys, and I've been letting them know how I feel because like I'll talk about it, but like I won't go in depth. I'll just right. be like, hey, this is bothering me, or I feel this way, or. And that's that. But, like, even on my comedy sets, I'll put some of that, too. Because, like, mm-hmm. when you guys were talking about where I come up with stuff, too, 90% of it comes from my life. Right. Because people are like, oh, that shit's funny about your grandma. Or I like that story. I'm like, no, nah, that shit's real, son. I'm like, right. she did flash me. <laughs> 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 she, came, she came home drunk one night from the bar. And oh, I was like, fucking God. And this was on my mom's side. And she's like, mijo. She was like, what kind of cheese does your grandpa like? I'm like, what? And she's like, what kind of cheese does he like? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, chee cheese and lifted up her shirt. Oh, my God. I haven't been able to eat pancakes the same. <laughs> <laughs> I can say. Um, to, to, to jump in off of uh, kind of what you said, um, one, that's really brave, man. I think that's really, really cool that you're able to open up. Like you said, we, we've we all, I think, we've talked about this on a couple other podcasts. Is that I think we are all growing up. Every single one of us are always taught how to feel and how to think. For you to sit there and say, hey, you know what, this is what's bothering me, and I was, you know, going through depression, and I, um, you know, I deal with it from time to time. That's very, 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 very brave of you. Um, so thank you for sharing that with mm-hmm. you, man, uh, with us, and it's that's very powerful, man, because yeah. I think a lot of us do hide behind it, and a lot of us are more worried about what other people are thinking instead of saying, you know what, I'm always so happy mm-hmm. our own, and this and this and that. We don't express our feelings enough because most of the time, people, like you said, that's not manly. It's not It's not manly mm-hmm. enough to sit there and say, hey, you know what, this is the way I'm feeling. Because if you do, oh, you're pussy. Oh, you're a fag. Whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you, Right. <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, see, and, that, and that's the main thing. And it's like, but it helps out others, too, because I've had people come up to me, especially, like like I said, we're, we're like a beacon because we lost our parents so young. So, like, you know, we've had 10 years of just dealing with it. Right. So they'll ask us, like, hey, how do you cope with it or how do you do it? And it's the same thing with the depression and anxiety. People are like, you know, they're like, Sam, I see it makes you, you know, it works for you, it works for me. I'm like, you can try. I mean, mm-hmm. I've always told people I'd rather know the answer than guess. Right. Um, try it out. I'm like, if you don't like it, hey, at least you tried. I'm like, everybody needs a coping mechanism. I'm, and I'm trying to do it the most healthy way because, like you said, people kill themselves or they OD. And in, in all reality, nobody really pays attention until it's too late, like right. Robin Williams, Absolutely. you know. And that's why I like what you said, because, like, nobody talks about that. Like, nobody brings it up. So I try to bring that to the light. Like, hey, mm-hmm. this shit's real. Like, yes, I'm entertaining you, and I'm excited and happy. But I also got life problems, and I'm sad right. as fuck. But still I'm still human. <laughs> yeah, right. you know. And that was the main thing, too, was just about being judged or, you know, it's like, how can this dude have this persona? And mm-hmm. then it's like, oh, no, nah, he's just soft. It's like, well, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to let you know and understand. I'm not going to kill myself because that's fucking stupid. But right. there's people out there that aren't as strong. Um, and it's just my main thing is just try to influence people and just help them out with that. Like, there is light at the end of the tunnel. It's not bright, but there is, it's there. Mm-hmm. Right. I agree. <clears throat> that's a positive message, man. Message. And I think, too, like, <laughs> I think, too, like, with social media, it kind of works both ways. I think, like, obviously mental health is a big issue now and actually coming to the light but at the same time, it's so easy to be fake 
you know, and to pers- like have this persona of either A, wanting to act like something is perfect or needing to because everyone else around you looks like they're living the dream. And we've talked about that so many times with our business. We find ourselves constantly comparing ourselves to other people's chapters. And, you know, when you step back, we're like, well, they're 10 years in their business. We're two years in. That's a huge difference. But mm-hmm. You know, and even like with comedy, I'm sure it's, it's hard. It's a long journey. Like anytime you want to be independent and entrepreneur and actually chase your dreams, it's hard. You know, it's super hard. And it's easy to compare yourself to everyone else that you see. And everyone at the same time, you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Yeah, see, and that's the thing, too. And so we like to hit surround ourselves with people like us so you know so it's like like you said we, mm-hmm. we've hung out with people that are like oh everything's all gravy or right. we're doing this we got this it's fake this, the funk and, right and you, you know you guys see that right away you're like oh this this shit fucking fake as hell right so and it's like nah we're just we're trying to be real about it i mean they ain't they ain't hiding nothing mm-hmm. ain't no lies here so it's like just try to be as real as possible like i said you know we tell you how it is and if you don't like it oh well i mean we're not gonna lie to you right people get mad about that they're like oh well, you're kind of blunt and honest. Well, yeah, I wouldn't want you guys to lie about me. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I want to be able you guys to tell me I'm fucking up or get my shit together. And it is hard comparing yourself because people were just comparing me to the fluffy. And I'm right. like, I'm not fluffy. Yes, I've been, I'm doing <laughs> comedy. I was like, but I am me. You right. guys are you. Like, right. you know, company's yeah. been here for 10 years versus the two years. A lot goes a, a long way when you're passionate. Mm-hmm. I mean, I started when I was 18 and I'm 28 now. It's like, I'm still climbing up. I don't right. think I'm the best. But I, I'm better than what, who I was yesterday. Yep. Um, so, and I always try to be better than what I was today, too, if that makes sense. Give yeah, Sam absolutely. a hug for me. I can't reach, bro. <laughs> Give him a hug, Diego. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a lot of dudes. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. Do that. Group hug, nigga. <laughs> I'll, I'll give him a fist bump or something. Group yeah, no, hug, we Craig. We group don't, hug. <laughs> we, don't, we, uh, <laughs> we don't do that until it's time to tuck him in at night. <laughs> Plus no, it's no, coronavirus. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh yeah, my you fault. Got a fist yeah. Pump. You got elbows. 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 <laughs> no, no. We all we all got herpes together. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't give it if you already got it, dog. Yeah. That's Being funny. in this little bit. Nah, the, 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 wor- <laughs> the worst thing I caught more than the coronavirus was the love for my homies. Damn. Deep. Damn. Give him a hug, Mike. Give him a <laughs> hug. Come on. <laughs> See, this, this is the this is the tough guy persona. So. Like, See now, no. now he thinks you're soft, bro. What my the fuck? Are, my arms are too short for that shit. <laughs> no, he is the soft one because anytime we're at grandma's and we're leaving, he's like, "You guys are fucking up." We're like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "You guys ain't tucking me in the bed yet." <laughs> I'm like, stop, dog. Yeah, I'd be like, so, <laughs> so you gonna fucking tuck me in or what? And I'm like, well, good night, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what a bed. He's either asking me to tuck him in or kiss him good night. I'm like, no, I'm good. Well, it was oh. kissing, but with the virus and shit, I'm like, just tuck me in. Right. Right. <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. Um, yeah, really deep though, man. That, that that's awesome. Um, we we've been talking about that more lately. A lot of people <laughs> trying to portray this image, and I feel like, especially uh, we I went on a rant about this on Instagram not too long ago about how, like, if you have a certain following, people are gonna look up to you. Now, if you're if you're always faking the funk or acting like everything's okay, not being real with the people that look up to you, you know what I mean? They aspire to be like you. And you're giving them false information, you know, that's it's fucking stupid. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that, man. Well, you know, and I've, we've all been in that position to right. where we've seen that. And that's why I said, it's like, nah, man, I don't, I don't want that. I want to be I wanna be 100 as possible. And if I can help you, I can hand. And if I can't, I can't. Mm-hmm. You know, I can lead the horse to water. And it's not going to be some nice water, but, I mean, it's going to be the real water. You <laughs> right. know what I mean? It's going to be a, a stream or whatever. It's not right. going to be this lake, I promised right. you. Some Fiji. Yeah, <laughs> Arrowhead. It ain't gonna be your boss. So, um, Diego, do you plan on doing? You know, like, I know Sam was talking about you getting on stage, and what does that look like for you in the near future? Are you still in the process of thinking about doing it, or what does that look like for you? No, yeah, like I, I want to do it. I didn't, I didn't really think about it, so he brought it up that he wants me to do it, and I mm-hmm. should. Because, like I said, I didn't really think I was that funny, and so I've been actually getting a lot of people tell me like, "No, you actually are pretty funny." So I've been thinking about it a lot, and my thing, too, is just I will do it, but I just need to build that courage like how he is for the stage fright, you know what I mean? So, right. like, I'll be exactly like how he is when he first started. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I can get past that. I can get past that, like, real quick. So, yeah, I'm thinking about it. I don't know when, but I'll do it. I just It's just building them up because, like right. I said, and a lot of people, and another thing, too, people don't know about is uh, people are scared of that stage, that stage fright. People have more fear of stage fright than, you know, death itself, and it's crazy because, like, these people can entertain a room at a business meeting, but mm-hmm. the minute they're on a mic, it's like in uh, front uh, of those uh, same uh, people. Uh, yeah. Right. Right, yeah, just like I sure. said, I just how I was. I was freaking out. I was like, man, I was like, how am I gonna do this? And I'm sitting there mm-hmm. shaking and like all choked up. You know, couldn't get half the joke out. Right. right. 
And you, have you seen a huge difference from obviously the first time you stepped on stage to now? How many years in now? Oh yeah, ten years. Uh, well, ten years in May. But huge, oh. huge. Are you gonna difference. do something for your ten year anniversary? You should do like a cool comedy thing or something. Or like another photo shoot. Everybody keeps bringing up that <laughs> fucking. Every, everybody brings up that fucking turkey photo. Like that. <laughs> yeah, or do something. That shit, that shit was sexy, dog. I, I, want, I wanted year. a calendar made for me, bro. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't want to do. No I don't want to do like a comparison because you're like, damn, this motherfucker got fatter. <laughs> Turkey got <laughs> smaller. Like, no, the turkey got smaller. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Yeah, that's a thick oh but, turkey. Yeah, that's a but no, ass. people are like, they bring that shit up. But I haven't thought of anything, honestly. I just, I just, I just keep going. I that's just, awesome. Like, man. And that's then it's cool. also the ten year anniversary of our dad too coming right. up. So like that's that plays awesome. a big part of it too. Yeah. But like I said, I try not to use it as a crutch. Mm-hmm. I use it as motivation because I tell people, I'm like, you know, if, if he didn't pass, I wouldn't have picked up a microphone. I never would have wanted. I never would be where I am interviewing you know with you guys right so it's a bigger deal to me than it is to you to be oh, on here or just in general <laughs> nah, it means a lot for you guys to come in man i mean i remember when we first uh did this podcast we were talking about having you on um you know a long time ago me and you spoke privately so yeah dude thank you guys it means a lot it's cool that you guys are able to share your story and i think it's it's really really cool to share with other people who maybe not know a lot about you um, and give you kind of more of a voice to talk about your personal life and not just see the funny side of you guys, too. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people, like I said, just from that persona, a lot of people didn't even really know. I mean, if you ask people, they're like, oh, yeah, we know them or we know Sam. Right. He's just funny. Mm-hmm. But it's like, do you really know him? Like, mm-hmm. do you know what he's about? Do you know what he does? And it's like, you know, and like the guys we work with, you know, it's like they know we're funny and all that. Like, but do you really know them? Right. You know, are, are we doing hood rat shit or are we helping homeless people and shit? You know, it's like, what are <laughs> they doing? Bibles. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, before I, before we're robbing, but now we pass out Bibles. <laughs> we pass out Bibles. Um. All I know is that Diego's not a good third wingman, is what I heard. Oh, wouldn't, oh, it wouldn't take one for the team, dog. It wouldn't take one for the team. We bringing that up now. Yeah. I don't know that never story. Gonna live this that down. story. Oh, man. oh yeah, <laughs> we got to hear the story now, bro. We got to tell it. Cassandra got to know the story, bro. I guess we might so, well so, I mean, we well, well, legally, relationship obligated. <laughs> Mike is... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Air muffs. Air muffs. Air muffs. We're going to need you to go outside for a little bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, so... Okay, so this there was this night where... <laughs> She's like, this, whatever. <laughs> she's like, whatever. I'll beat his ass later. All right. She does beat me, though. She's like, he's going to cry in the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, quiet ride home. But, um, so anyway, so we had these girls over. <laughs> we had these girls over. It's a long time ago, okay? This yeah, was <laughs> way before. This yeah. is pre relationship. Legally. <laughs> <laughs> Legally. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, oh fuck! No, so we brought these girls over, and well, one of them came over for me, right? And she had her friends with her, and on the phone, you know, she's like, "I got some friends with me." I was like, "Okay, cool," you know, I got my homie and my brother. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, friends, you have Friday. Like, oh yes, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. just like that. Yeah. Some just like that. Oh, oh my so she comes in, and then we're talking, and you know, and then her friend comes in. Bruh. And uh, I forgot her name. I it was like minivan or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, comes in, That's fucked up. and she was like <laughs> looking around because you know that girl came to me, and then the other girl was gonna talk to uh, we'll just say uh, Michael, not Mike, for legal reasons. <laughs> <laughs> for legal um, reasons. <laughs> <laughs> on his plan, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. You know, she came in. She was a big girl, and she was bigger than me. So at the time, I was like four fifteen. So I was big. She was tall too. She was yeah, like, and she six was tall. two or something, like and towering she, me. Yeah, she was. She was big. She was. She was you huge. I know that girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she was like, you know, and she's looking like, you know, what about me? And I'm like, shit, like, I don't know. What about you? <laughs> and she's like, well. You know, so and so was showing me your brother. Where's oh, he at? I'm like, oh, he's in his room. So I go to his room. <laughs> and I was like sleeping half of this day too, so I don't even know any of this was going on. You're just I was out. Happy, so. yeah, yeah, I was. Just, yeah, I was chilling. <laughs> yeah, he was just chilling, and um, so I knock on his door, I open the door, he wakes up, and I'm like, hey, bro, I need to ask you a favor. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we got some girls over. She has a friend over. I was like, there's just three of them, and there's. Two of us in the room, so you'd make the third one. He's just so like, all right, cool. What she look like? And I'm like, she she cool. <laughs> <laughs> like J Lo. <laughs> no, she cool. 
He comes in the room and just sees Shaq in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Shaq. <laughs> That's a huge bitch. Yeah, no, it's... Honestly, what got me was her, like, real deep-ass voice saying, oh she's like, God. just call me princess. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm legit. done. I, I gotta glow. Legit. She, <laughs> like, she just deeper like, voice than all three not. of us put together, bro. Legit. I was like, oh this is God. Diego, and she's like, I'm princess. Yeah. Like, that's that's honestly what just caught me. I'm like, she had, like I like, the can't. big hands like Seinfeld. Yo, it? for real. <laughs> <laughs> big old banana hands. Scared me and everything. <laughs> and, um... And he looks at Mike and he looks at me and he's just like, hold on, I'm going to my room quick, get on my phone. <laughs> Lock the door. Yeah, exactly. I locked the door. That's all your hood is like the hood locks. It's just click, click. Right. <laughs> <laughs> click, click, click. That's all you it's guys not, heard. It sounded like, yeah. sound like a liquor store locking up at night. <laughs> <laughs> he even put uh, his couch in front of the door. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck. So, I was, so after we got the door open and moved the couch, I was like, come on, dude. Like, what are you doing? I was like, she's about to leave. I was like, you know, we got this going. I'm like, just, just take one for the team, dog. Oh, I was my like, God. He's like, why don't you try? I'm like, I'm with the other one. I'm like, he's like, well, why don't Mike try? I'm like, he tried and failed. She wants you. I was like, for some reason, she just wants you. I was like, just, just go out. I was like, let her come in here. I was like, you don't even have to do anything. Just bring her into the room. I'm like, I was like, all I need is 30 seconds. You know, I'm good. Just distract her. And he was like, nah. I'm like, bro, come on, dude. Like, dude. I couldn't, the, man. Then I even pulled the home. I was like, dude, for the homies. I was like, dude, for the fucking homies. That's so funny. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, man, man, I can't. And so ever since then, we've been teasing him. And this shit happened, oh like, in 20, like, 13, 14, you know? So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> every to this day, I'm like, remember oh that time you, you fucked up our party? <laughs> 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 so she ended up leaving with the girls because she drove because oh, of him. Oh, she was a driver, So, yeah, m- <laughs> me and Mike were pissed with hard-ons. <laughs> all hitting everything all the way over to my room. Why oh stop? My God. You're right, like, you're about to handle this since they left. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Oh, God, that's so funny. Um, (laughs) That's fucking hilarious. So, it's no to everyone out there. Diego's not a good, uh, he's not a good wingman. Yeah, he was, but we haven't, we just, ever since then, you know, we haven't fully tested it. (laughs) You're afraid, right? Yeah, we're scared. I told him I'll do it now to, you know, get my redemption back. Yeah, we we got, like I said, it was just that deep ass voice and her, like, straight overtowering me, bro. We got, we got PTSD when it comes to that now. Oh, God, that's hilarious. That's so funny. But luckily, we don't have to put him in that position because now Mike's a fully committed, honest man who doesn't do hood rat shit anymore. <laughs> Good. Legally. <laughs> yeah. For legal reasons. Legal reasons. <laughs> For legal reasons. <laughs> Someone has my attention, and then Diego has his shoes in Hennessy. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. Awesome. Well, that's yeah. good. Um, so let's touch on, I guess, future goals, future plans. I know um, Ernest mentioned the Netflix. I don't know much about that. So if all of you kind of want to go – go around and just kind of say like what do you what are your goals what do you hope to accomplish where do you see yourself yeah kind of just fast forward it yeah obviously to the present 2020 um congratulations on that that's awesome with uh comic mafia um i appreciate it and i didn't have to sleep with anybody to get there (laughs) so what what is that it's yeah can we yeah yeah, just touch on more about that for those who do not know about that yeah okay so comic mafia is basically just um it's going to be a tv show about the lives of comics traveling from city to city. Um, It's going to show you the ups, the downs, Mm -hmm. you know. It's going to show you the real life shit because nobody sees that shit. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's going to show us going to different cities. And it's also going to be a show that's not PC. So it's going to be like what we talked about earlier, you know. It's just raw, original Mm -hmm. comedy. Um, So that's the main goal of it. And that's what the show is going to be about. Um, So we don't film until October. But everything was in pre-production since last October. And we've just been doing pre um, NDAs and all that shit before. Exactly. And then, like, right. what, like two months ago, we were allowed to talk about it. So, like, it's it's pretty dope. They're not going to be on the show, but they're going to be the extra stunt asses if we ever need something for right. that show. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, um, but, yeah, so it's just about the comedy life and just traveling, riding from city to city, traveling on a tour bus. And it's going right. to show, so like, cool. the comedy sets and all that, but it's going to be more about, like, the problems or, like, you know, riding – where we came up through right, creativity. Like the behind the scenes stuff, yeah, pretty right. much. That's so cool. How did you come across that? Was that through your agent? Like you know, you yeah. So you so Ed is yeah. So Ed, he's like my manager and my mentor. Um, he's he's the guy who got me my comedy show. My auntie Deanna introduced me to him, and he took me under his wing. And since day one, I just been by his side, like, you know, defending him right or wrong. You know, he's helped me out. So mm-hmm. like, I've always paid, like, my honor to right. him. I've always been loyal to him because I'm like, you know, you gave me a chance. Mm-hmm. Um, he called me up in 2016 and was like, hey, I got a great idea for a TV show. And at the time, you know, I was like, oh, fuck, whatever. Right. You know, cool. <laughs> right. 
because we're so used to being lied and living up to these expectations. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, I take everything with a grain of salt. Right. Um, he was like, trust me. He's like, we're going to work on this. I'll call you back. And then we talked about it briefly. And then in 2017, we talked about it more and the idea and he, he what he had. Mm-hmm. And then 2018, you know, so as the years went, it just started building, building up. So it really didn't take off till last year. But it's been in the works since 2016. But um, it's it's cool and it's it's a different experience. It's exciting, but I still got to keep grinding because you know it could be a hit or miss. Right. And I don't want to end up like MC Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's awesome, dude. Uh, congratulations, by the way. That's I appreciate really that. So cool. And then uh, as for future goals, um, I just want I just want to keep continuing. You know, I just I just want to keep doing what I do until mm-hmm. you know the day I got to go. I think you guys should make a YouTube, um, like a mini series on YouTube. All three of you guys about the lives, daily lives of you guys. Yo, so we I fucking know. Like, we need our own TV yeah, show. We, yeah, we, yeah, we, like we've been trying, but like what I said, with this TV show, it's so much because like my Ed will call me and be like, hey, we need to talk, and I'll have to talk to him for two, three hours. Mm-hmm. And he's out there scouting for locations and meeting the people and doing everything for the Kong Mafia. And it's hard for me because. I'm still a normal dude, you know, transitioning to that right. lifestyle. I, you know, I still work a 10-hour days, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm blue-collar. And at the same time, at night, I'm doing professional comedy. So, like, it, it's it's a weird position because everybody that's on the show can put focus into that. And it's like, and I'm still working. Right, and right, sometimes right. it's frustrating because I'm like, I'm still a normal person. But, like, yeah. with goals, I'm like, sure. it just pisses right. me off. Right. And best trash man in the city, by the way. Me? Yep, there you go. Ah, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just there for a check. They'll tell you that. <laughs> get, I told you, they get mad for my honesty. I, mean, so I wasn't funny. good, but I wasn't bad either. I just moderate. I just, I knew how to flow by, yeah, get, to by. get by. Yeah. What, what about you, Mike? What are some of your goals and aspirations? Um, probably, you know, I just, I'm just that type of person that just goes with the flow, you know? I don't really, like, try to think about stuff like that too much. I just know what I do is I put as much effort as possible. You know, keeping these guys going, keeping them straight and narrow, whatever. I'm like the old guy, so I'm 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 the I'm more of the worry ward and right. Hey, you know, you, I tell Sammy, you gotta think about this shit. You know, keeping do them this, in line. Do this, do this, and same thing with Bird. <laughs> but you know, they we just all mess around and just you know take it everything day by day. And you really I really don't think about it too much. Right, I think that's what's so cool about it. So it's like <clears throat> it's not something you guys are fucking acting or being fake behind it. it's like this is your day-to-day stuff so that's what's right. really really cool and that's what makes it so original and so funny that you guys are just being you and that's what mm-hmm. people love and that's what people can fucking smile and laugh about that's just fucking awesome what about you diego uh so i'm pretty much the same way as mike i just like going with the flow i don't really like plan too much ahead because like how i said before we actually plan stuff it doesn't go right or mm-hmm. just something mess up you know what i mean so i just like going with the flow or just going to take it by day like mike said and you know something comes up you know i'll give sam ideas or whatever because he's he's more into you know doing like the actual like why would you say like showing it off like advertising and all right. that sometimes, so but yeah we're just like sometimes we'll think of the crazy shit but sam's the one that'll do it <laughs> <laughs> no that and Com- comedy wise the other stuff yeah. you know you can't leave <laughs> 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 nah, don't, don't don't believe him because he's always like 20 bucks is 20 bucks <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's tough times now especially with this you know that's true you wouldn't want to know what i want to do for klondike bar for toilet paper? Uh, I, yeah, I don't think anyone wants to know that. <laughs> Got some toilet paper and hand sanitizer. <laughs> yeah, but but overall, the main goal is just keep everything, you know, going. And mm-hmm. like I said, and, you know, people around me, too, I want them happy, and I want them to be affected by it. And that's my goal in life, you know. I, it's not mainly for the money. It's just mainly for the people and get a message out, you know, whatever. Right. So it's like, you know, I never we never had money growing up. So now that, you know, money's coming in, it's not a big deal, mm-hmm. you know, because people are like, oh, I'm just in it for the money. Well, you know, you're, then you're not really doing it. Then, you know, right. you hear people all talking about that. All. Right. Yeah, people do that same quote all the time, but it's true, though. It's like, you know, I'm not in it for the money. I'm just I'm just in it trying to just entertain people, make them mm-hmm. happy, you know. That's just my main goal is make people happy because I'm not happy. So if I can make you happy, then that just, you know, it's a contradiction, but it makes sense in my right. head. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I think you're doing really, really good things, man. That's awesome. Um, I love what you guys are doing, too. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, uh, we also got you something too, by the way. So, oh, oh bro, <laughs> so that is tight. Yes, yeah, sir. And like with everything, we'll link 
like all of your guys's tiktok snapchat whatever Instagrams, that information then, on the comic mafia like and then porn hub yeah <laughs> whatever you guys whatever <laughs> yeah that that is, porn sorry, hub, i appreciate whatever you guys of course brother Thank whatever God. links think they don't guys. put around your beard though <laughs> <laughs> yeah see these guys make these guys we're always constantly roasting each other too like <laughs> That's just how we go around. And we won't even say anything. They'll walk in through the door. I'm like, what's your short ass doing here? <laughs> like, oh, gee, it took you 10 hours to get that beard in this house. <laughs> and it sucks, too, because, like, the longer my beard grows, the more hair I lose on my head. <laughs> I'm going to come in next time looking like Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. <laughs> or Mr. Dirty. Right. It's funny. Um, so I, I think the next question, next question I had for you is, what are some advice you can give to um, some up-and-coming you know, uh, other comedians right now who are just kind of test the waters and, you know, start their comedic journey. What is some advice you can give? Um, like my manager always tells me, um, he always uses polishing. He's like, just mm-hmm. polish, keep polishing. He's like, you want it to shine, keep polishing. He's like, a lot of people want to shine but don't want to polish. Um, open mics. Hit open mics up. Um, write stuff down. Definitely write stuff down, even if you don't mm-hmm. think it's a good idea. Because I'll be sitting here talking to you guys. And I'm like, oh, I'm thinking of this, thinking of that. Right. Let me write it down. And then I can go back to it later. Because, you know, it's hard thinking about something. And you're like, I'm going to remember it. And then you come All back right. and you're like, I don't remember shit. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, just just a lot of practice, practice, practice. Even though I'm 10 years in, I'm still practicing. You know, I'm still doing it. I'm still hitting open mics. I'm not the best, but I'm trying to be better than I was yesterday. Um, definitely try to get over the stage fright. That's the number one thing. As soon as you get over that, shit, it's easy. You mm-hmm. can go up on stage right. and do five, six minutes, ten minutes, up to an hour, because that's how I, it was for me. I was sitting up here like, I can't do ten minutes, and now, you know, I'm doing 30 minutes and hour specials now, so I'm like, holy, you know, it's progress. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Right. But just practice, practice. But the main priority is um, the stage. Get o- get over the stage for it. If you can get over that, you can handle everything. Everything else will flow with you. It's tight. And not, be not to be uh, afraid of bombing and shit like that, right? Yeah, don't, don't, everybody bombs, and if they tell you they don't, they're not doing it right because mm-hmm. even gr- even the greats bomb. Um, I've bombed. Um, I constantly think I don't do that well enough, so that way I can do better. And mm-hmm. I'm hard on myself a lot with that. And, you know, Mike and Diego tell me, like, don't be so hard. But it's like I want to be better. I don't, you know, there's someone always going to be better than me, better than me out there. Mm-hmm. I need to be better now. Um, but don't be afraid to bomb. Everybody's bombed. It's just like being a good driver. Every good driver's gone in an accident. Right. Um, thank you, man. That's awesome. It's fucking dope. That's some great positive advice. Um, and I think the next segment, I think we're gonna get in the the last segment, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we like to do this uh, segment with um all our guests. It's called First Things First. So we'll kind of give you a first. Uh, we'll give you a word and you have to have a. Uh, Same thing you explained. <laughs> right. I know. Right. Uh, first thing that comes to your mind when we say it. So. Like, like, when like I, all of us or me? Yeah, it'll well, be. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll alternate. Yeah, one at a time. Yeah. Okay. So we'll alternate. So we'll go with you first. Um, comedy. Do Diego first. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, Diego. Okay. Uh, Hold so on here. Here you go. Well, I'll just so, say so, a word. So when you, when you say like, something, I got to think of something that I think of that's... What, real, okay. Yeah, either yeah, whenever you, when you hear that word, so what like do you a, think like of? like a topic yeah. or just like a word? Anything, or a or phrase, anything that yeah. You of it. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so let's see, Diego. Do I got to be quick about it? Is it nah, you right? can think about it if you want to. Um, Not as long as Sam did, though. Let's see. Life. Journey. Nice. Just like that. <laughs> all right, all right. I see where we're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys messed up now. Right, Sam, Bu- <laughs> Sam Bueno. Fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this podcast is over. I'm just kidding. I've got to go. Oh, my God. All right, you want to go next? Uh, yeah, let's see, Mike. Um, relationships. Mm, work at him. <laughs> Sam, um, let's see. Success. Practice. And then let's see. Um, mindset. Thinking. <laughs> <It's not> thinking. <laughs> um, and I think we'll end on this one with Sam. Uh, adversity. Uh, you know, I went to a DPS school, so I really don't know <laughs> yeah. that word. You <laughs> can't even spell that. Yeah. Then he said, spell I couldn't read see. good. <laughs> um, overcome. Uh, courage. Nice. I like I that. like it. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. We truly awesome. appreciate Thanks it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So cool. Thank the you. The first time we had, like, 
bunch of guests. I mean, I guess we had Hugo and Laura, but yeah, it was a it was a learning <laughs> experience for us because we never had this many people in here before. And so we didn't really, ever really had cool, the light so. burn out. So yeah, so it was it's yeah. Like extra dark, which kind of when we uh, <laughs> you guys told us that you guys are uh, fucking bad luck when it comes to podcasts. So um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, just whenever we have Mike, cause Mike got the name Moose, cause everything he touches turns to shit. <laughs> <laughs> But no, we we appreciate you no, guys it's having probably, us. It's probably a good idea you don't have the light on because you have to see <laughs> see their ugly faces all right. right. Yeah, because you know your your views might go up. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah. The lights with the lights yeah, they would have went yeah, down. Negative. Right. Uh, st- <laughs> the lights on. You might have to start paying viewers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, to start paying for our views for this one, guys. And like um, we said, like always, we'll link everything um, on our YouTube channel um, when we promote it on Instagram. We'll have your guys' links to. Whatever you guys want us to link, like we said, it could be YouTube's or Mike's TikToks, Pornhub. everything. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's curious about the Snapchats and TikToks. Yeah, so for sure we'll so. link all you guys' <laughs> Snapchats so everybody can start following you guys and uh, get you guys some love and support on that. And then yeah, we'll, no, that's cool. And, we'll and vice versa, yeah. we'll do the same thing too. We appreciate Thanks. you guys having us on here. I mean, yeah. it's not like we get to do this all the time. So. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, fun, man. Fun. And obviously, uh, hopefully we can do a part two or something in the near future and uh, see what the rest of 2020 looks like for you. And we're... Trust me when we say this, it means a lot for you guys to come on here and share your story, mm-hmm. kind of what you guys have been going through, um, and all your success, man. I'm, I'm really happy, and I'm really proud of you to see what this looks like going forward for you guys. And I, I appreciate it, man, and who knows? You know, you guys inspired me to do YouTube, so maybe one day when I start my <laughs> podcast, I can right. have you yeah, you guys yeah, on there, awesome. too. That would be really, really cool. And I give credit what credit is due. You did tell me the YouTube and the TikTok, so a lot of the inspiration came from you guys, too, because I've always wanted to do a podcast, but so. I try not to bite off... More than I could chew because I got a lot going on right now. Yeah, Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, totally. But I'm a firm believer in returning the favors and shit. Thank Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, you guys be good at podcasts. You guys should do one. It'd be fun. Yeah, it would be (laughs) fucking hilarious. We'd have to do audio because I don't know about this video shit. Yeah, Yeah, it's it's, it's tougher. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's a lot of fun. They didn't know I was. They didn't know I was fat on audio. Like now everyone knows what you look like. Now they're like, Damn. Oh fuck. Oh, I thought this was Denzel. Uh, <laughs> Denzel. <laughs> I'm just glad it's not on four K. <laughs> on four K, right. No, it's all good, man. Diego might have a princess sliding in his DMs uh, after this. She's still she's still, she's still, like, she's still hey, probably like, gonna be looking for him. Like, yeah, that's still looks sexy. Like, like, what up, what up? Like, damn, he's fine as I remember last time. <laughs> gonna have a princess <laughs> juicy and yeah, you see all my couches deleted <laughs> <laughs> you gonna go oh, no, ghost go ghost <laughs> i'm like hey it's time to redeem yourself remember you said it on two that's radios oh, oh damn you, right? you won't you won't right? oh my gosh that's so funny oh my god so thank you guys for all tuning in to another episode of the hardcore strong podcast make sure you guys do check out uh, the Dream Team Fantasy Football Podcast. Uh, we are official sponsor for them. They got some awesome T-shirts, so make sure you guys check that podcast out. Also, the Down to Fucking Fuck Podcast is like they like they call it <laughs> Dream Team Fantasy Football. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in to another f- episode of the Hardcore Strong Podcast. Um, we'll make sure we'll leave all the links of everybody's Instagram, Snapchats, link to the Comic Mafia. Shout out to them. Right, and, and if you're in the Denver area, if you have any stand up soon, hopefully we yes. can all oh, yeah. see you guys. And support uh, do you have any so. shows coming up too, real quick, before we end this? Um, no shows, but if you want, for the ins- you know, the inspiring comedians, if you go to 5280comedy.com, it shows you where open mics are, and that's how you can start. Awesome. Usually that's I'm perfect. at those open mics, but no shows because of the TV show. Okay, and oh, we'll put okay. that down there below to support other local comedians. Yeah, so. just people that want to try it. Awesome. All right, cool. guys. Thank you guys so Thank much for tuning in. Thanks for having us. I appreciate it.